alam mo ako naniniwala that we are in the last stretch sa tinatawag na end times. Hi guys, my name is Adria Milag and welcome again to my vlog. At kung first time mo dito sa aking YouTube channel, make sure na mag-subscribe ka at click mo yung notification bell button para lagi ka updated sa mga bagong vlog na gagawin ko. And today, meron akong mahalagang tanong sa'yo. Are you a Filipino? Kung Filipino ka at pinapanood mo to ngayon, congratulations dahil meron kang special role in this generation. Alam mo ako naniniwala that we are in the last stretch sa tinatawag na end times. Hindi dahil sa tinatakot kita, pero mapapansin natin kung ano yung mga nangyayari ngayon sa mundo, mga significant event na nangyayari ngayon, at first time in the history of the world na nangyayari ngayon, God is saying something for this generation. And I believe God is using all of this sign to prepare us. Ginagamit niya itong lahat ng sign na ito para i-prepare tayo. Kasi ang Diyos, hindi siya bigla na lang siyang darating for second coming at magugulat na lang tayo, ah, nandiyan na si Jesus. Kasi pag ganun ang ginawa ng Diyos, malamang ang dami sa atin ang hindi makakasama ng langit, ang dami sa atin talaga mapeperish. Pero God is so merciful. God is a good God that He will do anything just to tell us that we should prepare our heart for His second coming. At naniniwala ako that we Filipino has a special role for preparing this generation for the second coming. At hindi lang ako nagsabi na to. At meron ding isang kat na Jewish evangelist na si Amir Chaparty. Okay, binanggit niya to isa sa mga talk niya na sa Israel daw, ang dami na raw Pilipino doon. Isa sa Pilipino ang may bigger role ngayon doon to preach the gospel of Jesus. To bring the Jews again to Jesus. Di ba? I mean, bibiruin nyo. Mga Pilipino ang nag evangelize ngayon sa Israel to prepare them for the second coming. Kasi biruin mo, di ba, kahit saan ka naman magpunta ngayon. Kahit sa ang sulok ng mundo, kunyari pumunta ka ng Alaska, ang at may bato doon, may Pilipino doon. O kahit itaas may iceberg, may Pilipino doon. <laughs> diba kahit sa ang sulok ng mundo, minsan yung mga lugar pa nga na hindi pwedeng tiran, magugulat ka, may Pilipino pala doon. Pinapatawa ko lang kayo. Pero what my point is, tinawag tayo ni Lord bilang isang OFW. Diba tayo nga yung product nga natin sa Pilipinas is mga uh, OFW and maraming mga Pilipino talaga nag-exodus pumunta ng iba't ibang bansa hindi lang yon ako naniniwala hindi lang yon dahil para sa financial or sa economy but I believe na gagamitin ng Diyos ang mga Pilipino to use us to preach His Gospel kasi di ba ang Philippines ngayon is the only Christian nation here in Asia Parang tayo na lang nag-iisa eh. We're, we're the last man standing na mataas ang pananampalataya sa Diyos. Sobrang blessed tayo. And in fact, ngayon, di ba, na nangyayari ngayon sa pandemic, itong crisis na to, kung di ba naman tayo mahal ng Diyos, na kahit ang daming pasaway na Pilipino, di ba, na ayos sumunod. Uh, pero yung cases natin ng COVID-19, napakaliit compared sa ibang bansa. Imagine niyo na lang kung hindi tayo mal- kung 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 hindi nagwo-work ang just ngayon dito sa Pilipinas, baka grabe. Bumagsak grabe yung baka talagang lumobo ng malaki ang ang cases ng COVID-19 at possible talaga na magkaroon ng gulo dito sa Pilipinas. But God is a good God and God loves the Philippines. Okay, naniniwala ka ba doon? Ako sobrang naniniwala. 
you have a special role in this last generation. Ipapanood ko sa iyo yung message, yung parang clip ng message ng isang Jewish evangelist regarding our role in the end times. But Manila can be proud, and the Philippines can be proud that you guys save Jewish lives when no one wanted to save them. On May 13, let me give you an example. A few months earlier, May 13, 1939, more than 900 Jews fled Germany aboard a luxury cruise liner called St. Louis. They hoped to reach Cuba and then also to travel to the U.S. Cuba said no. America said no. Canada said no. The ship had to return and more than 250 of them were killed by the Nazis. While the world was closing its gates, at the face of the Jewish people who understood what is coming up against them, the Philippines was well the very selected group of people that were honored to help save the Jewish people. And that was before Israel was even born. It was about saving the Jewish people, not saving the state of Israel at the time. Remember, in Matthew 25, Jesus is speaking of how this the nations will be divided to sheep and goats according to how they're going to treat Jesus' least of his brothers during the tribulation. The Jewish people will be getting another dose of anti-Semitism in the, during the tribulation. And the only nations and the only people that will help them throughout that time will be called sheep and will be allowed into the kingdom. The second thing the Philippines did is the first and the only Asian country that voted yes for a Jewish state in the land of Israel. November 29, 1947, Resolution 181 in the, in the uh, General Assembly of the UN, Philippines eventually, originally intended to say no, eventually was convinced to say yes, and had become the only Asian country to vote yes. So not only that God used the Philippines to save the Jewish people, but also used the Philippines to support the Jewish people's return to their homeland to establish their state. And if that's not enough, came a few weeks ago, President Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as capital of Israel, Immediately, I mean, the Palestinian promise that the, all hell will break loose, that the world will come to an end, but the world goes on. They only found out to their dis, displeasure that actually most of the Sunni Arab world will support them only by words. But in reality, the Saudis made it very clear to them that they don't mind that Jerusalem is not going to be their capital. The Egyptians made it clear that they don't mind that Jerusalem will not be their capital. They offer them either Ramallah or Abu Dis and other places. But they don't have the support they had hoped that they will have. And when that vote came to the UN a few weeks ago, the Philippines could have voted yes to reject Trump's declaration. No to accept Trump's declaration and the Philippines chose to abstain which means we don't mind that Trump Trump's declaration it's okay but we cannot say it's okay lest our citizens will be subjected to violence in many of the Arab states where they work so in reality the Philippines did not oppose that but quietly said we agree I want to tell you something. Originally, President Duterte wanted to move the embassy immediately after President Trump said that. But all of his advisors told him, haul the horses, mister. Because you, you, you just have to understand 
that he will put in jeopardy too many Filipinos, OFWs, and this is not smart at this moment. So they kept it quiet. But when time came, Philippines abstained and not automatically voted with the rest of the world. And the last thing is this. I want to tell you something, and it makes me so sad. There's a lot of Christians around the world that love Israel. And it's nice, it's admirable. But they don't believe in sharing the gospel with the Jewish people. They don't do that. Some of them are big pastors in America. They don't even believe the Jews need Jesus. They believe in dual covenant. There is a covenant for the Jewish people and the covenant for the rest of the world. And the Jews don't need Jesus in order to be God's people and save and have life eternal. And I, I, I don't want to give you the names because it will be gossip. But privately, I love to gossip. I'm just joking. I'm joking. I'm not going to say it. I, I, I will tell you only one thing. If you gather all the 30,000 Filipinas and Filipinos that are working now in Israel, you will get the largest church in Israel. There are more believers, Filipinas and Filipinos, than Jews in Israel. And I happened to, I was invited to speak at least in two places, in Tel Aviv. When Filipinas and Filipinos are away from their home, they are closer to God. I can tell you one thing, I see them there, their faith is unshakable. Why? Because He is the one they can hold on to when they have no one around them. They have no family, they have no friends, that they hold on to one another and to the Lord. You see that, and that speaks volumes to the Israelis that hire them, that, they're, that, that give them that job. And once I was there, I saw that in those two cases where I spoke, I actually spoke to Israelis. Those Filipinas and Filipinos invited their Israeli bosses. Guys, Everywhere I traveled in Europe, the most lively church was Filipino church. Everywhere. There's Filipinos everywhere. You sneeze and a Filipino comes. And... <laughs> everywhere around the world. It's amazing. And there's something about them being away that brings them closer to God. And I want to tell you something. I don't believe... That there is active foreign nation that is sharing the gospel that is bigger than the Philippines in Israel. So not only that you supported them when they were persecuted. And not only that you support their right over their land. And not only that you didn't care that somebody said it's the capital. But you also understand that apart from Christ you can do nothing. And they need to know their Messiah. So, if you're asking me, what is the role of the Philippines in Bible? I, be, I tell you one thing. I believe that God has a special hand upon this nation. Destine you to bring the revelation. Because Jesus was the light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of His people Israel. Remember that. You are destined to be there for the people of Israel, not only in the physical, but also in the spiritual realm. And I want to encourage you. There is, that's a great mantle. But at the same time, it will mean nothing if it's a mantle over a nation that its individuals don't follow the Lord. You understand that? I believe with all of my heart. Look. 20 years ago, I came here for the first time. I don't know why. First ever nation I traveled outside of my country to teach the Word of God was the Philippines. And I came here, I was five, 20 years ago. Hang on. Come on. At least 
say I was 10. You're laughing at my face right now. It's like, guys, 20 years ago, two days after I landed, I almost got killed. I was flown with a plane to a hospital in Manila. I was on a wheelchair. I thought I, I thought I died. But from that day, I knew God has this country in my heart, and I have special. I come here every year, and I can tell you that God has a special plan for this nation. And your job, if you are a true believer. Is to prepare your nation for the return of Christ. Because when the tribulation will come, there is no more Philippines. The islands are gone. Do you understand that you have a great responsibility not only to walk in the ways of God, but to lead your nation to Christ under the mantle of the authority given to you? And the privilege that was given to you to be a significant player in the plan of God to restore Israel, the people, to the land, with their city, to the return of Christ. What a privilege. What a responsibility. And what a calling you have. Father, I thank you so much for this amazing nation a nation that every time I leave this place I leave a, a small part of my heart here Father I pray that you will you who began the good work in this place you who chose this nation of all the other nations to play such a significant role in the restoration of your people Israel you who began that amazing work. We pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit and the diligence and the faithfulness of the members of this church and other churches, you will also complete that great work in leading this beautiful, wonderful nation to you and declaring that the Philippines belongs to Jesus. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being able to worship you here in this city, in this country, freely. We thank you for a president that can boldly declare a whole month, the first month of the years, the month of the Bible, where there is no other nation on planet earth that ever declared it. Father, you have your hand over this place. You have raised leaders to do such things. You have raised leaders in the past to save the Jewish people. You are now going to raise people to restore this nation back to you. And we are looking forward to that which you are about to do with great expectations. Because we know that He who promised is also faithful. We thank you and we bless you from Manila. And we say that we love you. And we ask all of this in the matchless and the most beautiful name of the Holy One of Israel, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Lion of God, the Lamb of God, the, the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, we pray. And all of God's people say, Amen. 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 So I hope na na-bless at na-inspire ka sa narinig mong message ni Brother Amir Chaparty. Uh, ikaw ba nakikita mo na meron kang special role ngayon sa generation na to? Alam mo, marami sa ating mga Pilipino ang hindi nakikita yon. Minsan, ang lit ng tingin natin sa sarili natin oh. because of mga nangyayari sa na, na problema dito sa Pilipinas. Parang maraming Pilipino ang sobrang naging hopeless na ibang mission pa ang nakakakita ng special role at purpose natin ngayon. Ngayon, in this last generation, our Blessed Mother, Mama Mary, really loved the Philippines. Mahal na mahal niya ang bansang Pilipinas. Meron ako share sa inyo 
in maybe in my next vlog basta abangan niyo tong vlog na tong gagawin ko regarding the Our Lady of End Times. Kung narinig niyo na to, itong bagong uh, apparition ni Blessed Mother Mary, Our Lady of End Times. Actually 2018 pa to. Actually nalaman ko lang to late kahapon, no? Okay? Nalaman ko lang to kahapon and kung hindi mo kasi alam yung Our Lady of End Times uh, sa panaginip ng isang Pilipino na taga Bacolod nakapanaginip siya may nagpapakita sa kanyang batang lalaki at sinabi sa kanya na ipaint niya yung image ni Mother Mary na nakita niya dun sa panaginip niya so tinawag yun na Our Lady of End Times and sobrang excited ako na i-share ko sa inyo i-share ko sa inyo yung message ng apparition na to I'm sure na sobrang mabibless kay dito ako nung nalaman ko to, nung nakausap ko mismo, yung mismo nagpaint nung nakausap ko kasi siya and I was blown away, I mean I was so blessed, I was so ho- sobrang nakaka-proud na Pilipino tayo eh, na our blessed mother is really working in this country at merong special role ang bawat Pilipino ngayon, sa generation na to Okay, so stay tuned. Abangan nyo tong vlog ko na to regarding sa Our Lady of End Time. So excited ka? Pwede ba mag-comment ka sa baba ng video na to? Naniniwala ka ba? Naniniwala ka ba na meron kang special role sa generation na to? Naniniwala ka ba na ikaw ay isang modern day apostle? Comment your answer sa baba ng video na to. God bless. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope na na-bless at na-inspire ka dito sa aking vlog. Make sure na i-like mo at mag-comment ka sa baba ng video na to. At mag-subscribe ka sa aking YouTube channel para lagi ka updated sa mga bagong vlog na gagawin ko. At huwag mo din kakalimutan na i-like ang aking page. So this been Adrian Milag encouraging you to live your life to the fullest. God bless you more abundantly.